Well, today on Nation, a window cleaners podcast, we're talking all about a loss due to downtime. How do you fix it? How do you take care of your downtime? We only have so many hours in a day and anybody and everybody can be more efficient. So if you're in business, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up everybody, Jersey here from windowcleaner.com and you are here. What is up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. I'm telling you, uh, we've been doing now like seven years. We're in our seventh year for this. There's tons of content every single week. Have not missed a week yet. Pretty crazy. Um, so go back, listen to anything and everything. If you're not uh, a first time listener, what's up? Thank you so stinking much for coming back uh, and thank you for just, you know, following content of mine. I really, 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 really genuinely appreciate it. Um, so this exactly what we're talking about today is a loss due to downtime. And I, I mean, I'll have some kind of, you know, sexy title by the time this comes out. But that's the thing. I, I know this time of year, everybody's busy. Um... Even if you're slower than normal, you're busier than winter, you know, um, I know most of you are just absolutely incredibly busy, busier than you've ever been ever, which is phenomenal, by the way, congrats. Well, when we're busy, a big piece of that puzzle is we only have so much time. We literally only have so much time. I mean, I get in this talk all the time with people about, you know, um, I had one guy one time tell me, um, I'm, I want to be like Walmart of window cleaning. I'm going to be as cheap as I can so I can get as many. And it's like, that's not how this works. They could do that because the more t-shirts they sell, the lower the price goes, the profits go up. So the more they sell, the profits go up. See where that concept is? When you're selling time, there are only 24 hours a day and you can't show up in the middle of the night. So stretch that out. How many hours do you really have? You have like a 12 hour window that you can do stuff. And most of you are not working at 6 a.m. I, I mean, maybe you are, but not, you know, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. You're not doing 12 hours, maybe. Maybe you are. But if you are or not, the point is we only have so much time. Now, the Walmart theory is it's still an hour of time. Never does it change. If I do 100 hours of work or I do one hour of work, each hour is what they're paying for. That's it. I'm, I'm not doing okay. more. Okay, I found this on the web. For is it? I'm just, you know, my phone talking to me. But I'm not doing more and somehow getting, you know, like a bulk increase. I, the more time I put out there, if I'm fully booked, I don't make more per hour without changing things, right? So the efficiency part of it, is what you have to work on. There's only so much time. So the problem ends up being is eventually, maybe, and this is not everybody, remember I'm just a dummy who talks in front of a, a, a screen here, but sometime you're gonna be an owner occupier or an owner operator, and then you're gonna go, well, I gotta get more, I'm, I'm so far out, I'll get another person that shrinks it up, right? So now I can do what used to take one person 80 hours, I could do it in 40, because there's two people. Multiply that by 10, that same amount of work now is done in eight hours, right? With 10 people, I can get done what took me two weeks with one person in one day. But I'm still having the same pay for those people, and it's still the same hours. The hours never change, even if the linear time changes because I have more people. So what you have to do is become more efficient in the time that you do have. And the reason is, is because if it is January, most of us, we're not going to be working or we're not going to be working to what we are now. So you can't go, well, you know what? I, I'm, I'm super busy now. You know, uh, I had a rain day or I had whatever. I'll just take that work and I'll put it in January. Like we can't really do that to the, 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 the whole side of it. You, you can't really do that. So what we need to do is find a way to optimize what we have. And especially when we get busy. There is so much time wasted because we'll not get that day back. When I'm recording this, it is in June, a very busy month for a lot of us. Now, if I miss a, a Thursday, 
and say it's supposed to rain and everybody cancels at noon on a Thursday, I'm going to miss the rest of that day. Any of the work that I would have done in that day is gone. Yes, I'll move that ahead, but I'll never get that slot back. Now I've just taken that chunk, say 12 to 6, out of my entire year. And I will not make any more money in those six hours because I just canceled. Now that happens when you have gaps in your schedule, when you have no work, when you have reschedules, when you have cancellations, you have rain days, you have all these different things. Our job is to make sure that the hours we're here are absolutely filled with things making us money because that's how you grow. A lot of us go out there and go, well, yeah, I got five employees and all five employees tend to, you know, really, they don't put 40 hours a week in because the schedule's all over the place. Some weeks they got 22 hours and some weeks they got 40 hours and you're all over. That's not optimal because if you did an optimal schedule, you could have, instead of the employees you have, cut them in half and still get the same amount of work done. Maximizing what we do is huge. And this time of year, there's nothing more important because it's busy, right? And I'll start off by, I'm going to say the float board, and you guys have heard me kind of talk about that once. So I won't talk too terribly long, but what I do, or I've done, and I know a lot of people do this, is they take jobs that don't require a homeowner to be there. Gutter cleaning, um, let's say you have exterior window cleaning, um, you have any type of thing that their customer doesn't have to be there to let you in and all that stuff. When they call or schedule, I put it on the float board and I say, Great, we'll put you on their floater board and that will allow us to get you done as soon as we have a possible appointment available. I'll let you know when we're headed over there and then we'll leave you with the invoice so that you know that we were there. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, great, awesome, so awesome. I don't put big jobs and doubles and all that stuff and inside and outside, I'll do that. But everything else I'll put on there. If I got just a simple gutter cleaning or an outs of a you know, house and, and it's, it's a casement house you know, super simple. They don't have to remove screens. I could do it if somebody's there or not. I could do it if it's potentially rainy. I could do it anytime. Put it on the float board because what will happen, guaranteeing you know this, is that your schedule will free up. You'll have a point in your day where the guys get done at, you know, three. Or you end up having, uh, oh, it's supposed to rain. Everybody's freaking out and then it doesn't rain. Or it rains for 10 seconds and goes away. Especially in the summer, you get these summer storms. Now, I always have work to fill that I don't have to call somebody. I don't have to move somebody. I don't have to stay. I can just fill it in. We get a crew. Hey, this went really, really smooth. We're ahead of schedule. Awesome. Uh, go do gutters at one, two, three. Okay, perfect. Those guys are already out. They're going to hit that. We run float um, invoices with all of them. We make copies so that every truck has them. And we have them in a packet. So if somebody needs to pick one off, they pick it off. As soon as it's done, I pull the invoices from everybody else. It's just not an option. I can schedule that. So that means that every day I can get as close as possible, which in our industry, you know, is impossible. But as close as I can to being that eight-hour day, right? If you're doing overtime then maybe more, but I want to get the most out of that because if I'm only working four hours and I got to send all my crews home and only get four hours of work, I'll never get back that other time. So I fill that with the float board. The floater board is absolutely a game changer. It helps so much with filling the schedule, making sure there's no gaps and optimizing it. We have to get it while we can because we will be slow again. It's just a seasonal business. We know that. So we got to get it while we can. And I, some of you, when I talk to you about and mention the floater, they go, well, yeah, but I just put it on later. It's the same work. I get it. Yeah, but now in four weeks from now, you got a job, but you could have filled that with something else from your advertising, marketing, SEO, all that stuff. Floatboard is a game changer, and it's so absolutely easy. Um, another one is kind of watching your schedule. And this is another one kind of a hark on a little bit because – so many of you, I know that's where a big gap is. Where it's like, oh man, I gotta drive over here, and then we gotta go over here, we gotta go over here. When you get jobs, when somebody calls you and says, hey, I'm looking to schedule, you just fill it in. Cool, our next available appointment is, well, if you're in a 10 minute drive from one side of your service area to the other, that makes sense. But most, if not all of us aren't. So why are we scheduling like we are? 
I know guys are driving in a day. They're driving four hours of their day is driving around. And how many people have that? That, again, is four hours you're not going to get back. If you could somehow magically make every job right next to each other, you'd have no drive time and you would have had four hours more of work. Scheduling is on you. It's up to you. You get to dictate when and where. People go, well, yeah, but I don't. Well, that's because you haven't done it yet. But if you have a city that you go to, not as common, make that one of your days. Hey, every Tuesday, we're in XYZ City. When somebody calls, yeah, you have available maybe on you know um, Thursday this week, but they're in that city, so they get put on Tuesday of next week. I can close those gaps. Remember, the more we get done in an eight-hour period, the more we're on to the next thing. Now, this is incredibly important when you go into a dentist close. If you're not doing a dentist close, you are fighting your company's success. The, the dentist close is phenomenally, literally the number one thing that will change your life is that. Now, that's a teaser to a thing I talk about all the time. I'm not going to talk about it. But that dentist close... You're the one scheduling it. So if you're there in that city and you're pulling up your three month, six month, hey, six month actually gets you on, uh, it's going to be a Tuesday if that works for you again. Well, you know, Tuesdays aren't good for me. Well, then you kind of figure that out at that point. If you have to have one job that's better than having every job just be all over the place. You can be, so say you're two weeks, three weeks out right now scheduling. All of you go, okay, well, Tuesday is boom, 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 full. Wednesday is boom, boom, and then there's a gap. And then nothing Thursday, nothing, for, right? Because you're scheduling, just putting them right in. It's okay to have that week be, I got two jobs on Tuesday. I got four jobs on Wednesday. I got one job on Thursday. And I got three jobs on Friday. There's pockets in all of those. But I'm scheduling way out. Now I know when people come, I can see the best place to put them. Even if you're changing that just a little bit, that schedule, that drive is big. This is why it doesn't make sense to have two people on a route, route storefronts, because you're getting all that drive time and now you have two people, you just doubled that. If I got, so say I have an hour of drive time in an entire eight hour day, that's not a lot. That's really amazingly good, right? But if I have an hour of drive time and I have a crew of two, but say I got five crews, that one hour of drive time cost me 10 hours of labor. If you're making a hundred dollars an hour, man hour, that's how much production they are doing. If you lose, if you're just driving one hour a day with five crews, that's one thousand dollars a day. Now I know, maybe you don't have you know five trucks. Cool, maybe you have one, but understand the concept's still there. That you're losing that much. In production every single day an hour of drive time is costing you a thousand dollars and that is absolutely something you can control I know now you're busy and I know it's hard to kind of schedule and you know well I'm already booked out from I know but starting now this is where the change comes the way that business growth happens is if you can grow according to your personal growth. If you change according to your growth, if you modify something or change, say you start doing a dentist close, maybe you've never done that. Say you start it today, forever now, your business has changed. Say you start optimizing your schedule now, which again, you're four weeks out, cool. That means that once that four weeks in one day comes, you're optimized forever. These are the changes that companies do to increase this how to become proficient there's guys out there going well hey i'm, I'm doing you know x amount I, I don't really have a ton of profit or i, I don't have anything it's, okay optimize it yeah it's not really it yeah it is it it is absolutely it it's like prices well, i'm trying to do all this you know but man we're really running tight your prices are too low no they're fine no they're not you're you're literally telling me they're not right Anyway, I have to stop for a second and tell you the shameless plug of the day. This podcast is brought to you by me, Jersey 
with windowcleaner.com. And that's what I do. I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. And I would love to be your rep. Literally, you've been listening to this podcast for a while, right? You're like, ah, man, I got some cool information or whatever. Maybe the guy sucks and he's super nasally. It doesn't matter. Either way, I know you're buying supplies and I know you're buying them from windowcleaner.com because we're the absolute best place in the entire planet for supplies. And I want to be your rep. I want to be the guy that you can call for questions. I want to be the guy that you text to put orders in. All you have to do is if you're shopping, go ahead, just click save this cart. It's in your checkout right above the buttons to pay. You click that button instead. Text me at 862-312-2026. Be like, yo, my cart is ready. All I do is verify your address and if we got your card, I can run it. And that's it. I make it easy. It costs you not a penny more. It's the exact same if you do it or I do it. But I get credit for it. And then me and you are best buds. It's just, you know, how it happens. So, uh, no, genuinely, though, I do uh, appreciate everybody who does place orders for me. And there are so many of you who obviously do not. I would love, love to put your orders in. So my number again, 862-312-2026. I'm sorry, that was a, 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 little bit, uh, a little bit much there for my shameless plug today. You know the drill. Hopefully the shameless plug works on you. Um, uh, also, if you haven't yet, get a subscription to the American Window Cleaner magazine. Yes, a real paper magazine. Yes, that's where the stickers come from. Put them on everything. I mean, this is your industry. You know those people who like treat you like a glorified janitor? Stuff like the AWC magazine. Like this is cool. Like think that all you want, but I'm taking this seriously. I'm growing this business. This isn't a business of mine. Get the magazine, learn from it, look at it, indulge, be immersed in it. It's awcmag.com forward slash sub. Just go to, just search the American Window Cleaner. It's 69 bucks a year. Get a subscription for the um, benefit of your company. Anyway, okay, there you go. Shameless plug is done. Uh, but I have to bring those up because, you know, making money um, kind of helps me live. So. <laughs> and by the way, uh, if you're listening to this while this is live, I am out. I'm on vacation for the first week of July, which is pretty rad, I think. Um, so if you uh, get an automated message, I'm checking and doing all my uh, text messages and putting orders in just like normal. It's just a little slower back and forth. So, you know. Um, anyway, so back to kind of financial loss and, and what you're doing. Another thing that I have that's a huge pet peeve, and I know it happens and it's so underlooked. It's so overlooked. That's what I meant to say is having a truck that's stocked. There's nothing, nothing worse than guys get into a job and not having something or something breaks and they don't have something or they get to a job and forgot something and then some of them have to go or they have to stop at a store or they have... That can all be taken care of. If you show up to a job, every job, every time with everything you need, you could just take that waste of time out of your your day you don't have time right now to go drive back to the shop or to go run to the walmart real quick to pick up a thing that you'd just put it in your vehicle have a bin with extras extras of everything i mean this is literally you know people are like well it would be really hard to yeah it's 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 hard to kind of get the stuff together to find out what's going to break or what you have backups for but then you have backups for everything having a backup is what a real company does. One is none. That's the saying, right? If you only have one of something, you have none of something. Because as soon as it breaks, you're best so well. Right? I know it makes things tricky to kind of find out what's needed, what you have to get, what you have to put in, what you have to say. But you know kind of what things could go wrong. And there's also things that could go wrong that don't really end your day. You don't have to put that in there necessarily, right? Like, say, uh, an extra base cap for your pole. Like, you don't need that. Like, if the base cap fell off or they lost it or something, then you just keep cleaning and then you get another one. Like, it's not the end of the world. But, like, if a fitting 
breaks. You know the fittings, that's the Quick Connect plastic one, they break. Like O-rings go, um, you know, hoses split, all that stuff. It's so easy to have just a little bit of things, a little bit of items to have backups to kind of everything. Redundancy. This is, um, this is on me. I'm going to give you one of my stories. But we did snow removal. This is one of the things we did that we were in Wisconsin. So, yeah, you know. And uh, one time I had a crew and we had a big storm. So I put three in a truck because it just was huge. It was one of those ones where we're lying out forever and ever and ever. And I wanted to have that extra one so they could kind of speed things up on the crews and kind of help each other instead of having so many trucks out. And um, on this particular one, we had a uh, pull string break. Now, for whatever reason, there was no extra pull string for the snowblower on the truck. Now, I know this isn't window cleaning, but you can equate this to anything. So a crew of three drove 20 minutes back to the shop to be able to get the thing. And then I met them there and put it on, and then they drove all the way back. It was... An hour of wasted time when we were rushing to try to get everything done. That's why we had three people anyway. But instead of an hour of wasted time, it was three hours. Three hours. Again, if you're doing $100 an hour in production, just the turnaround time was $300 to fix that pull cord. You don't get time back. That could have been, if I had a pull cord on the truck, which we always did, but somehow somebody took it off and didn't say what they were supposed to. Anytime they used something or it might have fallen off, maybe somebody didn't know, I don't know. But for me to take a item that I had anyway, and instead of keeping it in the shop where we had all of our extras, I just put one in the truck. It would have saved me or made me 300 dollars now yeah okay minus like you know a couple minutes for them to put it on but because it wasn't on the truck that one thing cost me three hundred dollars in production they could have been doing three hundred dollars worth of stuff these are the little pieces that you 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 overlook so easily but the busier you are the bigger you are the more these little bitty things the little pockets the little discrepancies the little things add up to big numbers now that's one day one instance one drive there's 365 days of a year imagine that now on every crew that you run on every person that you run on every season and job and add-on that you do we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars in savings, in production, in whatever. Understand that when you have a four hour, hey, it rains, I'll send everybody home at noon. When you have that and you're like, yeah, well, I lost, you know, a thousand dollars in production or whatever. We'll get them, you know, the jobs we still have. We didn't lose anything. Understand that now you're just busier, you're pushing it ahead. Nothing's changed. You just didn't make the money that day. You will fill the jobs. You will add to the schedule. But why not fill it as much as possible? Our goal is to get what's called saturation. Saturation is like, okay, if I have a crew of two, I know that that crew will make $1,600 a day. That's like, the best they can do every single day, 1600 boom, 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 boom. That means my pricing is right. That means my uh, schedules are right. That means my float board is there. That means my efficiency, uh, boom, 16 every single day. I know we're seasonal business, but I want to have that every single day. Every weekday, I want to have that. If I'm not, a lot of you are not, you go and then, well, we're getting so busy, got to hire somebody else. Well, can you not optimize what they're doing? What would you rather have? A crew of two or three trucks out there with six guys doing the exact same amount of work because the guys aren't being efficient? 
when people are out there doing this work and getting these things done and you have all these crews and you're like, I don't know where the money is. Yeah, it could be pricing. It could be a lot of other things, but is it not efficiencies? They're getting paid to do this. The more that they can do, the better they are. Now, I would rather have it into a small block where then I'm not paying them in a day in January because now it's my job to go off and sell more in January. You have to find the little pieces that you're losing and optimize them. Flowport, shorter drives, um, making sure to have everything. This is all kind of together. And I'm going to preface this next one with, I know I'm a, a rep, I'm a sales rep, but I owned a window cleaning company for a very, very long time. So this is coming from the window cleaner, not the rep. But another one's equipment failure. How many times, A, if you didn't have something and something breaks, but how many times has somebody tried to like limp along because XYZ was too expensive? Or, I mean, all the time I get people who are like, you know, oh yeah, my budget's $1,000. I need an RODI system and a 50 foot pole. You can't, what do you suggest to do? Not buy anything. Like you're, you're off, you know, work one more week and you have the money. Like a budget is a thing you build in your head. A budget doesn't exist. If you're spending your last dollar to the penny on equipment, something's seriously wrong, right? You need living money, you need fuel money and all that other stuff. So the budget is the thing you create. But how many times do people, I mean, you have it, you probably have stuff, you're probably guilty of it. The people you work for, if you've ever done stuff, is probably guilty of it, but they got equipment and you're like, this thing is a piece of crap. Yeah, but I'm not gonna buy a new one if this one still works. Yeah, but we're always fixing it. We're always, just buy new equipment. If every day you're spending an hour fixing equipment, we're trying to get something to work, we're making something work because that didn't save you any money. It costs you money. Equipment is what makes you work. Like changing out rubbers, change a rubber daily, flip it every day, change it out to a new rubber every other day. No, I get like, I get like a month out. Why are you doing that? Now you're detailing more because you're chasing streaks and you're, you're, you're dealing with this, this crappy thing to save a couple bucks. Like a couple bucks saved by having more headaches or taking longer to do stuff isn't saved. If you have a uh, water fit pole that's garbage, it's not saving you any money by not buying a new water fit pole. Like this is why when I had my company, we had extra systems. Uh, we had pressure washers, we had pure water systems, we had extra poles, we had brush kits, just sitting there, brand new. One is none, I had extras of everything. If that one's junk, take it out, let's get a new one. It will make me more money if I spend money on better equipment. <clears throat> this is so dumb and I know, again, take it with a grain of salt. But if you have a super floppy pole for uh, water fed and you go and buy a destroyer you will make more money by buying the destroyer because you can work faster the poles not bouncing all over you're less fatigued you're not using weird muscles to try to keep it all over the place you got a pole that's probably the right height now so you're not uh, stretching and not getting a really good clean anyway so you got to work on that window twice as long like all of these things help they all change they all go, equipment makes you money. Better equipment makes you better money. It's just a fact. So don't skimp on that. You're not saving money by not doing that. You're not saving any type of money by not investing back into your company. Understand how we make money is by having people do things efficiently and I have eight hours a day. If you got a guy who's going to do a job and it's supposed to take an hour and it takes him four, he's the problem. He's the efficiency problem. He's got to get trained. He's got to get better. He's got to whatever. But if they're doing their job and they're getting an hour's worth of work, right, $100 production every hour, eight hours a day, that's optimal. Now when those guys are filled and it's all the time because they're so on top of it, it's so dialed in, 
Now you'll hire another crew. Now that one crew is doing so much, my company is doing more than the company with three crews because I'm so efficient. Efficiency is king. Size does not matter <clears throat> when we're talking window cleaning. This just doesn't. Like I know so many companies that are giant and then you look at their P&Ls and you're like, what? I always say this story. I know a guy was doing almost $3 million a year. A lot of you are like, now that's a company. He was profiting $30,000. The, the salary he paid himself was okay. Like, you're not efficient. Like, just because you're big doesn't mean you're efficient. You could do what you're doing now in half the people, half the trucks, half the insurance, half the, all those costs. If I can get the same work done in one truck versus two trucks, I cut all of those expenses in half, getting the same amount of work done, which means I make more. Efficiencies are just as important as getting new work. Absolutely. And now's the time to do it. We're busy. So there you go. Shameless plug number two is literally, please do let me put your orders in. I need money for brand name Ritz crackers, as uh, somebody said uh, just a day ago. And uh, I need money for hair gel. And you can tell me when you text me, you can tell me all of the luxurious items, name brand band-aids even that I can buy with your commission money. Um, so please do let me put that in. Literally, it doesn't cost you anything extra. I try to make it extremely easy. I wanna be the guy that's in your back pocket and I want to put your orders in because I like living and existing. So please do let me uh, put your orders in. 862-312-2026, text me any and all the time. Send me a text, I love texts. I did uh, last month 6,066 texts. So if that tells you, you know, uh, how much I text. And also, if you haven't yet, go and get the subscription to American Window Cleaner Magazine, the absolute greatest window cleaning magazine of all time. Look at that. Look at Mr. Sorbo. So good. He's a good guy, by the way. Uh, AWCMAG.com. Get the subscription to the magazine. Be a nerd like me and everybody else. But more importantly, go out there. Don't have any more financial loss. Dial things in. But more importantly, go and be epic.